You're listening to the Get Out and Drive podcast with John Custom Car Nerd Meyer and Jason Old Car Guy Car. We'll be bringing you gearheads everything you never wanted to know about cars and why they should be on the road and not in your garage. Are you ready to get out and drive? So welcome back to another great episode of the Get Out and Drive podcast. You know who we are. We were. We want to talk a little bit about uh, towing. Um, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the towing industry. And the reason why we want to talk uh, about towing is a recent article that we came across from uh, New York City. And New York City, John, is uh, in the business of towing illegal parkers, auctioning off their vehicles within or at, after 10 days if, if the fees and penalties um, are not paid to redeem your vehicle. Um, sold off to the highest bidder. I don't yeah, they, they, that is, that's nuts. I know we talked about this a, uh, a while back, like a week or so ago when it came out and it was, it was bonkers that I could think that you could lose your vehicle, whether or not you had a lean on it, uh, anything at all. Um, as, as a person that formerly had a shop, I know that all the hoops I had to jump through to get a mechanics lien on a vehicle, if a customer were to have it abandoned or not pay or whatever. And it certainly didn't take two weeks. It was a lot longer area. I don't know how these people are zooming everything through and they're getting vehicles. Hell, we've looked at the list of cars that are for sale They They have vehicles that are the 20, 22, 23. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, and, and and as I mentioned in the in introduction of this uh, episode, is that from July the fifteenth to the twenty fifth, they have uh, six, seven, eight auctions going on, and a total of four hundred and seventy five vehicles will be auctioned off. Now, I can only assume that if you had a lien on said vehicle. And vehicle gets sold, who's responsible for that lien now? Are you off the hook or does the buyer assume that role? Does uh, what, what happens there in the US? I know what it's like in Canada. I don't have the answer for that. I've, I've not been because I drive old junk and I've never had a car payment. <laughs> um, I, I don't know the, the, ordeal that you would have to go through or who would pick up the uh the lien on that or if the lien gets transferred to the new purchaser maybe one of our listeners knows that certainly well, chime I in know, i have no idea yeah and, and i know that uh being in the car business when it comes to, to to doing dealings with you know taking a trade in that still has money left owing on it um you know i am responsible for that lien um, so basically what would happen is, is that John, you know, trades in his 2018, something or other, he's got two or $3,000 left going on it. Um, he either is responsible to pay out that two or $3,000 lien, or we take it and we add it to the new loan and you just kind of refinance and just kind of wrap that into the new loan. And the previous lien on that 2018, whatever it was, is, is done. So when I go and I fix it up and I try and sell it, there's no legalities there. Nobody owns that vehicle other than me uh, so that I can sell it with the clear title and the clear reg registration and send it on its way. Um, when people buy private sale, they are not always privy to that luxury of knowing when a loan or a lien is, is attached to a vehicle. So uh, let's reverse those roles. John wants to come buy a car from me as Joe Blow. And I have two or $3,000 left going on it. John pays me my, let's say 10 grand. Uh, and he drives away in his new 2018, whatever. Well, three or four months rolls by and old Jason boy here has not paid out of that 10 grand that John gave me that extra two or $3,000. Well, the repo man is going to come looking for that car. I no longer have it but they're going to find it. Where are they going to find it? They're going to find it in John's driveway. And without hesitation, they are going to hook onto it and yank it out of there. Why? Because John assumed that responsibility of that lien because, well, buyer beware. Unfortunately, that's the way it works. 
wow, that seems like a lot of stuff to get mixed up in and a lot of information that I have to keep up if I want to buy a reasonably late model car from somebody. How, how do I, as, as a potential buyer, school me? I mean, how do I find these things out? So one of the biggest uh, <clears throat> proponents to buying used cars is using products like Carfax. Uh, if you are looking at a particular vehicle and you are serious enough, you can pay the 20 or 30 bucks or whatever it is to do a Carfax on this vehicle. <clears throat> and that is your responsibility. And that will give you some information. One of them would be uh, the option to check and see if there's any outstanding liens on that vehicle. So if you do the Carfax and it says, yes, there's a lien, then when you're negotiating your price with your seller, you make sure that that lien gets paid out before any registration transfers, transfers ownership uh, and before any cash takes place. If the customer or if the seller needs the cash that you're giving him to pay that off, uh, then you go with him to make that payment and you pay that with the title in hand. You, 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 you've got to have some knowledge of whether or not that's happening. We got way off track talking about towing, but the towing relates back to this in the oh, fact most certainly <laughs> you look through these lists of New York City auctions and three quarters of them are debted to somebody. So you buy that at the auction, it would be interesting to find out. I know here in Canada, when you buy a car at the auction, it is the seller's responsibility to make sure that that lien is uh, looked after uh, before it gets sold. So uh, again, not sure how that works, what happens uh, if the lien basically just disappears and the uh, person who owns the car is now on the hook or, or what? Either I certainly way. wouldn't want to be involved in the rat trap that would be buying a car that has been towed and i have to go hey previous mr owner would you like to help me screw you over more by <laughs> by paying off your car how does this work i don't yeah. know how that works yeah it's uh it's 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 pretty uh it's it's pretty sketchy um but nevertheless the uh the new york city bylaws state pretty clearly according to this article uh, that when the time comes, you have 10 business days to straighten it out. Wow. There's also fees listed on that page. I forgot to print them off and share them with you. Uh, but initially, the initial fee for picking up that vehicle, I think, is $125. Uh, there is, I believe, a price per day for the first three days for storage. On the fourth day and on, that price increases. Uh, there is interest charged on those fees. There's taxes on those fees. So when the time comes, oh, don't forget the original fine you got to pay because of the reason why your car was towed. Uh, so whether it was an illegal park, uh, whether it was um, uh, an unpaid parking uh, meter, or or just maybe you were just popped out to go grab a donut and <laughs> left your car there running, whatever. 10 days is all you've got to come up with the money, pay your judgment in full, pay your fees, pay your taxes, pay your storage before that thing gets trucked off to the city auctions. Well, the only, I can tell you the only reason I parked in that spot, there was a huge sign that said fine for parking. I thought, it was I thought it was the perfect spot. <laughs> so th th this is, this is kind of a little bit of an oxymoron. What'd you call me? Is that the word I'm looking for? It's counterintuitive. When have you ever seen bureaucracy work so fast? I've never seen it work fast. Ever. You want a, you want a building permit to replace those stairs on your back deck? Yeah. Do, 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 exactly. Do, 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 That's just longer do. than 10 business days, folks. But heaven forbid you're parked in front of a fire hydrant. Boom. I mean, not mm -hmm. that I would, but I'm just using that as an example. If you're an illegal park, whatever that looks like, and you get towed, 10 business days, kiss your car goodbye. Wow. I mean, do you do you see this as just a revenue grab? Well, <clears throat> I thought of that. When you first sent me that article, I thought of this. Is this just a way for the New York City to get rich quick? Hold on to that thought for two seconds. I live in a town of a Approximately 4,500 people, 5,000 people. 
I made a few phone calls to a couple of the local towing companies today, and I had asked them if they wouldn't mind sharing, how many illegal park towings do you do in the run of a, of a month? And the, the, the answer was, well, we could probably narrow it down by the year, and it's probably single digits. Uh, so wow. here in, in, in my hometown, uh, we have free parking everywhere in the downtown. There's no paid parking. However, there are a few areas where you cannot park overnight. There are a few areas where you can't park for more than two hours. Uh, there are certain restrictions. So very rarely would somebody get uh, towed in the wintertime when the when the uh, snow ban is on, meaning you can't park overnight because of snow, meaning your car may get plowed in. Uh, there are parking uh, bans that way. In 5,000 people, in the course of 365 days, there is less than 10. Wow. So if you're using that math in a town of 5,000, New York is over 8 million. So if five, oh shoot, let's make it easy math. If one in 10 is getting towed, right? That's 8,000 cars a year illegal parking in New York City. What do you do with them? You got to get rid of them. You got to move them out of the way. You can't store them forever. You can't ship them far away. It's way too costly. You've got to get rid of them. They're in the way. Move them. Don't I heard the fun. Part I, and wait. You, you, they, they fill up so fast because that's what you were saying. There's on average 8,000 cars. Yeah. And I'm sure they, that number is probably skewed. I mean, we're a small town, rural New Brunswick, mm -hmm. Canada. This is New York City, the biggest city. I think it's the biggest city in the U.S. If not, it's it's pretty damn close. You know, it it's it covers per, a huge per footprint. capita, probably. Yeah, right. So it covers a huge footprint. That's a, that's a lot of cars. That's a lot of towing companies. You need to be authorized by the city to be able to tow as a towing company. You can't just call Joe Blow, who's got a wrecker at his junkyard, and say, "Hey, can you come help me move my car?" So the city doesn't. No, you can't. It's against the law. You need a license to tow. Just like you need a license to to operate a taxi cab. Wow. Just like you need a license to operate a hot dog stand or a shawarma hut or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I, I did see that the uh, the towing is oddly taken. It, it, it's governed and everything by the sanitation department. It I did falls, see that. It yeah, is yeah. that it is that falls under one umbrella. Yep. It falls under the sanitation department because they're physically getting rid of trash. Yep. There you go. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And and they're not biased, folks. Whether you're driving a BMW, a Chevrolet, or a Hyundai, they're going to tow your car. This isn't St. Louis or where. I mean, recently, uh, recently, how many? Uh, what kind of cars you, did you see on that list? I mean, I saw things, everything from like a '50s or '60s car all the way up to 23. Yeah, there, there's there's a lot of everything. So basically, uh, picture it. You're you're driving down. Every city has it. Every town has it. The motor mile. Uh, all your dealerships are in one area of town. You drive by uh, on a Saturday morning and you say, oh, let's go car shopping. You hit one spot, one locale in town. It's the motor mile. Picture it. Hyundai's, Kia's, BMW, Toyota, Chevrolet, Dodge, Ram, whatever. You you scan this list. Every make model is there. Wow. I even saw a Maserati. <laughs> so, you know, even the rich folks are illegal parking. Well, I've certainly uh, don't know if it 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 skews my idea, but the only idea I have of New York is is Seinfeld. You know, I <laughs> I don't have any idea, and and I certainly see people double and triple park. They just park in the middle of the street, and and I'm guessing that's pretty common. Well, the one that comes to my mind is Homer Simpson mm -hmm. when he parks. In uh in the, the the area between the two twin towers, mm -hmm. uh and he gets his car booted, uh and then the guy come along selling the pickle juice or whatever it is, he drinks a bunch of those. By the end of the show, he's got a piece of bed. He has to go find a bathroom, and when he's up there, uh, he sees them coming down to uh, tow his car, and nice. he hates New York City. <laughs> he makes it work. He makes it work. But anyways, yeah, so. On the topic of towing, we, you know, I guess I wanted to bring up the fact of, you know, I personally look at 
tow truck drivers as first responders. Um, you know, not because <clears throat> we would classify them as ambulance chasers. Uh, there are a few of those, but uh, when when accidents happen, uh, the the police, the fire, uh, EMS, they need to get that aerial tended to. Uh, they need to get the traffic flowing again, and uh, you know, tow truck drivers and 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 wrecker services are right there with them. Um, so I would be remiss to say. You know, if you see flashing lights on the side of the highway, slow down and move over. Uh, in most states, most provinces now, that is law. Uh, and in some cases now, if you see anything on the shoulder of the road and you have the opportunity to slow down and move over, do it. Uh, it doesn't cost you a cent. A little bit of courtesy goes a long way, keeps everybody safe. So, John, what do you think? Do you, do you feel that tow truck drivers are, should, should be classified as, as first responders? Well, I, I know that I don't know how all the way across the United States, but I know that a lot of them here in St. Louis Metro, and I've seen around Missouri and Illinois, uh, they have uh, siren. They have blue lights on them. Uh, the city or municipality contracted vehicle for towing has blue lights. And by by. United States law, and I'm sure Canada is close to it, um, you have to give right away for a vehicle that has siren and flashing blue lights. And and I've seen that that certainly helps L lately that that describes that that is an emergency vehicle. That's a first responder, yep. somebody that's coming to help. Yep. And if you guys follow Ron Pratt on YouTube, Ron Pratt uh, is a co-owner at, I think it's called Midwest Towing in Scott City. Uh, I believe that's in, is that in Illinois? I don't know. Maybe Missouri. But anyways, okay. down, down in, the, in, the, in, in that area. Um, and he runs not just the amber lights all around the truck, but in the grill, he's mm -hmm. authorized to use red and blues and have a siren on that truck as a first responder. Um, one of the reasons why I brought that up is because I, I, I watch Ron Pratt's YouTube channel quite often, does a lot of heavy wrecking, uh, heavy rescue. Uh, and then you go down and you look at, uh, everything autos who is, uh, just a, a young couple in, uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, who they run just a couple of small wreckers doing similar jobs and they just run the, the yellows. They don't have sirens or, or, or none of that in Tennessee. Uh, but when you're running a wrecker service, there's different aspects to that. So you get called to do an illegal tow. You're doing your job. You've been asked to do something by a private citizen who has a car on his property that they don't want there. You go and you pull that car, you tow it, you get rid of it, and you're the bad guy. Not the people who called the tow truck and certainly not the people who illegally parked. But as a tow, uh, a tow truck operator, you're the bad guy. How is that fair? Well, it get it, that happens with the repo guys. I mean, how recently it was close to uh, Fourth of July in the United States. It, I've seen repo guys that are coming to a uh, apartment complex and people are shooting fireworks at them. I mean, Roman candles bouncing off the top of a repo truck. Yeah. Uh, every repo driver that I know of has a monstrous hand cannon that's in the truck and a lot of them for their own safety um everything is automatic yeah and a lot of them are now body camming themselves uh correct correct that way that way that for security purposes or whatever because you i i watch them i'm drawn to them the videos of uh your cars getting repoed and you this isn't like yesterday it was fine and today it's getting repoed they've been chasing you for a while yeah. and it's getting repoed and they have an all wheel drive car. They jump inside of it and hammer it and it rips off half the back of their car and the bumper and, and ruins everything. So now you're not only ruining your car, you're ruining the tow company's uh, repo truck and, and a lot of things. And in it, it gets to be big dollars when they, when they sue you for trying to take your car. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the, the problem is, is that it's always somebody else's fault. They're always trying to cast blame on someone else. You didn't pay your bill. Uh, the repo man has been hired by the bank to come take the car back so they can salvage what little bit of money is left 
uh, that you may owe, or maybe it's a lot of money. I don't know. But nevertheless, mm -hmm. you know, if your car is getting repoed, that's on you. If you're illegally parked or parked someplace you shouldn't, that's on you, right? So uh, you let your parking meter run out. If I mean, par are parking meters still a thing, John? Oh, in St. Louis, they are. Yeah. So you let your parking meter expire. <laughs> that's on you. It, it It is. And the best thing that's happened to parking is that they don't accept coins anymore. Some do, some, but most don't in yeah. in uh, Metro St. Louis and surrounding. Um, there, Everything is uh, app based app or digital. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Everything is digital, has a little marker and it says where you're parked and and you can get an alert. And it says, hey, your parking is going to be going to be out and you can up it from your phone now. And put a quarter in your in your meter, <laughs> you know, the thing only takes two hours, but somehow you got to run like a madman back there. And it's always the the meter made is two cars from yours. Yeah. And I, I do know that, uh, you know, when we travel to the city, uh, that's a big thing is is there's no such thing as free parking. Uh, I think on the weekends, the parking meters are free, but like, through the week, Monday to Friday, certain hours. But yeah, like you you go in, uh, you park, your your parking meter has an identification number. Mm -hmm. uh, so you either scan the, the QR code uh, or you go to the kiosk and you punch in the code and it gives you a little ticket. You go, you put the ticket back in your window so that the meter maid knows that you're, you're looked after. Mm -hmm. Um Parking garages are a big thing as well. So parking garages, I like uh, because um, you're in there. And the only way out <laughs> is through that kiosk to pay your tab, right? So you can go park for five minutes. There's usually a minimum. Usually there's a maximum as well. But look, you, you roll in there, you hand on that tag. You're not getting out unless you're paid or or, or you you run the bumper. <laughs> In, in St. Louis, they recently, I mean, it's a tiny bit off of towing, but in, recently they had a uh, uh, a parking meter or a, 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 a parking arm for a parking lot was broken. And no matter what you do, you put your card in 10, 100 times and the arm wouldn't come up. And it was on a day where uh, everybody was trying, at a time, everybody was trying to leave for um, jury duty. They had dismissed everybody and there was a out. and the first person's in the front there and the arm won't go up there's 30 40 cars behind them or whatever and they're all waiting forever somebody jumped out of their car and snapped the arm off and let it lay there and everybody drove out there you go <laughs> yeah, on on whatever local board i read on st louis reddit board uh and and who they said hey i was in line at the parking garage in clayton missouri and whoever snapped off the arm god bless you <laughs> <laughs> that's the way I found out about it. Somebody was wanting to give the student an award. Yeah. So I, I, you know, we, we go back to, you know, the whole towing thing and the, and the tow truck drivers in a lot of cases, especially for e illegal parking uh, and, and repos tend to get a bad rep. And, you know, they're, they're just hardworking men and women, just like ourselves. Uh, and just like you guys who are trying to do a job, they get a phone call to go pull a tow uh, and they tow it. And uh, all of a sudden, they're the bad guy because they're charging a fee to do their job. Uh, you know, one thing that I did gather with uh, with that is that when it comes to illegal parking, apparently cash in a lot of in a lot of jurisdictions, cash is the only acceptable form of currency. And people would want to say, well, they're just trying to pocket some cash and keep that money away from the government. You know what? I doubt there's that. However, if you were allowed to pay with a credit card and you go and you get your car out of Hawk. All you've got to do is give the credit card company a call and say, Hey, I didn't authorize that charge. Wow. Credited. And you just got your, your fine for free or your toll charge for free. That's why for illegal parking, it's cash only. Wow. Doing a charge back on illegal parking. That's what they do. Genius. <laughs> Because you're pissed off, right? Why, like, oh, of course. Oh, sure. Here, I'll pay the three hundred dollar bill. Here, here, just swipe my card, and then as you're pulling out of the lot, you're on the phone with Mastercard or Visa or American Express. Wow. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't authorize that charge. Wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> so don't get any ideas, folks. Chances are, if you're ever put in a position where you've uh, done an illegal park and you got to pay the bill, yeah, they're requesting cash only. They will give you a receipt, though. <laughs> well, that's what I need. I'll take it off on my taxes. <laughs> yeah, I parked illegally. Can I claim that? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, hopefully somebody, uh, one of our listeners can help us, uh, you know, with some of our questions. Um, and I know uh, you get a chance or you want to speak to us or you want to ask us what we should talk about next or you have any answers for our questions from this episode, please go to our website, go all the way down to the bottom and you can hit that listener hotline link and you can leave a message for one of us, answer a question or tell us what you want to hear. And make sure you tell us if there's a topic that you want us to discuss. If there's some information you want us to do a little bit of research on and help spread the word on something, whether it be towing, policing, EMT, uh, hot rodding. We do, we, you know, we talk a lot about cars here on the Get Out and Drive podcast. That's basically uh, what we're all about. And we would really love to spend some more time talking about the next generation of car enthusiasts, uh, the young people who are coming up uh, in this world who, uh, who just aren't anymore, John. That's one of the things that uh, we we like to try and spread that word uh, of the Get Out and Drive podcast is finding a finding out what drives youth, and uh, we also we also John talk about what's coming up in the very very near future. Oh yes, it's sneaking up on us already. Sneaking up on us the first Sunday in October, John is. Wait, what? Oh yeah, it's going to be Get Out and Drive National Get Out and Drive Day. National Get Out and Drive Day, first Sunday in October, uh, coming out very quickly, less than three months, John. Uh, so we got to get our information together. We got to get everything ready. Got to get decals done. Got to make sure we have a sponsor. Got There's tons of crap we got to do. Yep. Coming right up upon us. And uh, we'll be doing a lot more promos for National Get Out and Drive Day. You can register for free at www.getoutanddrive.com. And when you do, we will send you off a new 2024 National Get Out and Drive Day sticker. See you in October. Cruise on over to our website, getoutanddrive.com, for all the info you never wanted to know about our podcast. Hit us up on our listener hotline, be the first to know what's happening, get industry news, and grab your Get Out and Drive merch. Connect with us on social media. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Follow us on Twitter at Get Out and Drive Pod. What drives you?